we've been developing uh, plugins for Howler now using uh, VB so far, the uh, the classic Visual Basic, uh, because it is a uh, good match for working with COM, and also because it's uh, uh, it's both a compiler and an interpreter, so it's very quick to work with uh, for doing these uh, demonstrations. But uh, on, a, on a more practical level, you'll probably be working with something more like Visual Studio Net uh, that's more current and, um, well, basically freely available uh, in the form of the uh, Visual Studio Express and also the uh, team uh, versions uh, that are um, out there on the Microsoft website. You can find them uh, very easily. Um, but we are uh, going to go ahead and do an example here in VBNet uh, because... Uh, it makes sense at this point to uh, to show that th there are some slight differences and we'll have to adjust for those. So let's just start with a project, uh, a new project. We've added a form. And I'm going to go ahead and show a product project that we've already built at this point instead of making one from scratch uh, just for expediency. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into this code behind on the uh, button here. And uh, you see this, the uh, the event, the the click event. Uh, and the code that we have inside of it. And you see, we see that we have a copy of Howler running. Um, I did, uh, when I set this up, I did the same thing and I, as I did in all the other uh, builds. I did, um, uh, let's see, I went to, I can remember where that's at in this <laughs> the, uh, set reference. And it's a little bit different than what I'm used to working with at the moment. Uh, but it's here somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, add reference, and uh, I went ahead and added the uh, the reference to uh, do the dog waffle exe in my uh, 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 project files. Uh, Haller slash dog waffle exe. Uh, and once you've done that, you'll have uh, access to all the uh, the com stuff. And this was uh, in incidentally, this was a uh, let's see, add reference. This was a a, a com type. It wasn't uh, a, an assembly or any of that stuff. It was the uh, the com interop um, options that we have here. And you would go to browse, and then from there you could uh, select that from your program file. All right. So once you get that reference set, you'll have access to all these things the same way we did uh, in the other uh, Visual Basic VB uh, Classic. Uh, you could do stuff like dog waffle dot, and you know you'd have access to all these drop down items uh but one thing we don't really get is access to the global stuff uh that's because we have to add an import uh here in uh vbnet otherwise when you do a like a, a dim d as new dog waffle class or dim uh, dim something as howler image or whatever it's not going to work it's going to say it's not defined well we have to go up to the top of our project here our file handbook imports dog waffle uh not a big deal then everything will be uh, visible to us and you can see all that is cleared up and we now have, we can now declare variables of type new Haller image new uh, VB vector all that stuff Let's see there yeah so that's all uh, available and working for us now let's take a look at our project it's just a simple loads an image inverts it and, and sends it back not real complicated so let's take uh, from the from the top I went ahead and dim D as new dog off a class it's just easier to type D than it is to type dog waffle and all that stuff. So now, once this is declared as dog waffle class, all I have to do is like D dot, um, and then you'll have access to all those things. You won't have to type dog waffle dot, all that stuff. So that's just a time saver. Because uh, our dog waffle class is still our primary uh, access to most of our functions, or a lot of our functions. Okay, so I, a, I set up a variable as a, uh, uh, w and H for width and height, width and height, uh, and uh, you can see I'm using integer instead of um, long. Uh, in VB Classic, long was the 32 uh, 32-bit uh, value. In uh, in VB Net, uh, a long is a 64-bit value. So instead of long, we use integer uh, in those cases. Uh, so it'll be compatible with um, what what we use internally uh, in uh, in Haller, which is a 32-bit uh, long. Um, I go ahead and define those width and heights as uh, using that dog waffle object I defined earlier, d dot dog uh, underscore buffer width and buffer height. 
uh, I'm, I have a label here. I just uh, do label.tax equals width and uh, VB new line and H, which is going to insert a, uh, a carriage return or a new line in between the, those two values on that text label. Uh, then I create a new um, array. Uh, in VB Classic, we would do just that as byte. But in the uh, VB Net, we, we have to specifically tell it how many dimensions are going to be in an array. This is a two-dimensional array, so we put a comma in there to tell it that's how many dimensions will be in there. And then we'll redim it, redimension it as uh, same name buff. And then we'll do this formula here, width times 4, minus 1. Remember, um, in VB and VBNet, the, it doesn't use the size of the array that you want. It does the upper dimension. So it's actually going to be minus 1 uh, in both cases, width minus 1 and height minus 1. And that will give us the correct size array. Okay, I'm going to do I as new Haller image. That creates a new Haller image object, which we can now uh, use its properties and methods. Uh, I'm going to use the pixel get pixels method of the image class, the Heller image. I'm going to pass it that buffer that we uh, dimensioned up there, and in a string that is BGRA or RGBA, whichever order we want our channels to be given back to us, um, can be defined using that string. Uh, I'm going to declare a couple more variables, X and Y and RGB, and then I'm going to go to the inner loop here. I'm going to do an outer loop, which is the Y loop, and an inner loop, which is the uh, the X loop. Um, may not be the most efficient way to do it. It might want to do the Y on the inside because in uh, VBNet, uh, let me see. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but VBNet and uh, VB Classic store their uh, bytes in, in the opposite order, although I think it's doing interop for, it, for us, so it might have actually sorted that out for us. I'm not sure. Uh, not worth getting uh, into, but you can Google um, column or uh, row uh, major, <coughs> excuse me, major, column or row major uh, format to learn more about that. All right, so we just do our little uh, loop here. Uh, for x equals 0 to width minus 1 times 4, step 4. Uh, that's basically going to um, go through the entire array and, and skip over uh, every 4. And then when we read this, we'll read uh, x plus 1, x plus 2, etc. Uh, because these, these values are packed into a single array. Uh, then we do r equals 255 minus r. That just basically inverts it. Same with g and b. Then we put these back into the array the same way we took them out. And we finish our loops. Um, and then we go back to that I object. That I object is our, uh, uh, let's see, our, I don't know where it went, but it's here somewhere. <laughs> That's our um, our image class, our Haller image class. Uh, we call this method uh, set pixels, which is the opposite of uh, get pixels. Basically, it puts them back. We pass that buffer back to it. And we call D, that's our dog waffle object, D dot dog refresh. And that is it. So let's just run this to make sure it works. It compiles and eventually it starts running. And we click the button. We see that it did that and inverted our image. And we're done. That just shows that you can do this just as well in VBNet as you could in VB Classic. You could any any object that uses COM will likely be able to do all this stuff. Um, just showing a few examples. Uh, in a more modern uh, API. So um, thanks for watching. I guess that's it for now and talk to you later.